Hampton. So, um, welcome to our podcast. Um, I'm Abigail Aquaviva. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva. And obviously, we're married, I suppose, many people know that, but you might not know, I, I worked with Mark about 12 years now in, in his yoga, and I wanted to interview Mark specifically about his practice and how it relates to the kind of work that I'm interested in. So I wanted to get really specific about his understanding of, of what my, my interest area is. So my first question for you, Mark, is um, what brought you to yoga as an adult? Uh, yeah. I, um, I, yeah, I was brought to yoga as a kind of, um, well, if, if I'm honest, it was because I was in pain. Uh, I was in a lot of physical and, uh, with hindsight, emotional pain. And, um, uh, yeah, and uh, I, I stumbled across this Scaravelli-inspired stuff that um, was about being kind, which uh, resonated with me. So, so I sort of launched myself into it. And, um, yeah, and then um, I, w I was on a, after a couple of years or a year or so, I was on, on this retreat um, in Turkey, I think. Um, and I was walking around and I realised I felt happy. <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it wasn't just um, uh, an emotional feeling. It was my, I was, hap I was happy in myself. I was happy in my body. And, um, and I just thought, oh, I can't do anything else. <laughs> this has to be it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Okay. So I want to go back to um, the very first time that we met in person. And um, it was at Little Dippers in Brighton. And you walked in, you still had a coat on, you still had a bag over your shoulder. And I hadn't even changed out of my clothes. I was still in my leggings and probably my coat on as well. And you said hi and... I said, my, my hip hurts, because I hadn't slept that night, I was in a lot of pain, I, had, I didn't sleep a lot of the time, and instantly, without even me being in my yoga pants, in my vest or anything, you could say, looking at me, that um, I wasn't connected from my ribs to my foot, and um, I, hadn't, I wasn't resting through my hip. Now, in that moment, it made, it made no sense to me at all, and over years, that did make sense. My question is, what do you see? How can you <laughs> see that through all of those layers? What, what do you see? Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember the moment, but I, I do this, I do that sort of thing all the time. So. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, this, is, um, this is a common thing that you yeah, do. Yeah. That I'm just speaking about my experience, but I want to... So what do I do generally? Yeah. Uh, um, Hard to say, really. Sometimes I uh, sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing when, when I'm because um, uh, these days I teach on on the screen, and all I've got is this sort of postage stamp size image. But I still kind of see, I kind of feel it. I suppose uh, mm -hmm. I feel it or see it. But uh, I think um, what I'm picking up on is, is the whole person's. Uh, relationship to the world uh, on a physical level um, it doesn't involve judgment or anything it's just uh, like if you if you look at a wonky table <laughs> you, you know which leg is too short you know it's, it's as simple as that but um, but um, it's different things I'm, I'm looking at uh, those kind of stresses uh, I'm giving the hint by you you telling me what what the issue is yeah so that so my attention is drawn to um, the location of that issue but what I'm, what I see, what I'm looking for, is well, what is the person's relationship um, to space above that area? So uh, at the time it would be um, you in space and your and and um, how you're breathing and where you are, and then how you relate to the ground underneath that area and how those things meet at that place of conflict, and and I'm not sort of intellectually working it out. I'm just, mm -hmm. a, I'm a, there's a sort of quality to it. Mm -hmm. The quality to someone's movement that, that everyone recognizes through, um, you know, we all, we all read body language. So it's kind of along those sort of lines where, where you, pick, you pick up an idea of 
how someone feels from uh, their body language. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a bit more, um, what's the word, engineering, if you like, than that, because yeah. I can see where the physical stresses and strains are, and I know that relates to other things, emotional stuff, but I can say, well, if your ribs could find support from the ground there, then your hip wouldn't have to catch your weight. Yeah. Um, that's how I'd describe it now. It's probably less articulate back in the day. That's a great answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad I asked that question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyone who knows us um, won't be surprised that early days, I, I didn't understand your work at all. And um, I'd come, and I think it, it's interesting, there's two groups that come to your classes. One are the um, very experienced yogis, might be long history of Scaravelli, and the other group are people with uh, some sort of condition. And I, I fell into both camps, actually. And um, I, I don't want to sort of, don't do this at home, kids, but I, I don't want to go into it very long, but I had an understanding of Kap- Kapalabhati that was a, a pull uh, in, in the lower belly. And consequently, the t- teacher training I'd done before, they said, don't do Kapalabhati, because I had endometriosis. And... Um, I, I like working with women who have similar sorts of things, endometriosis, fibroids, polycystic fibrosis, all of those are kind of under the same heading. Mm-hmm. In Chinese medicine, that would be called damp, would be congestion, would be about moving the chi. So um, I'd, I'd like you first to give your take on what's going on in, in the body, what, what the Chinese would call um, da- damp, mm. that, that where growths happen. Um, what's, what's, your, what's your view on it? What's your... Gosh, um, okay. So, <clears throat> the, the, the way I see the body, well, the way I, I look for solutions is really quite simplistic. Um, most Western stuff kind of looks at where the complaint is and points all their attention at that area as if it's that area that is the problem. Perfectly understandable because that's where you feel the pain. So um, somewhere, something like endometriosis, so whatever I'm given, I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I don't uh, know the details, but I can look up what the symptoms are and what it involves. And endometriosis, endometriosis is a blockage in the flow tubes, is it? Yeah, it can be there, it can be anywhere. Anywhere along the line, yeah. yeah. So, um, so that's the symptoms. And what I see it as, how, the way I see the body and the way I, I find solutions is I see the body as basically space. As in, you, you, you have these internal spaces that are, have a structure around them, which is your bones, and, um, and that space is either in its kind of happy environment where the, the, the way that space defines itself, like the, the womb or the, the intestines or whatever, whatever organ it is, um, if, the, if the way the person relates to the world and support and, and everything around them in a way that keeps that space happy, then that space will not be a, uh, a problem. And the, the, when, when you don't have a problem in an area, that, that's what it is. It feels like space. It, it feels like it's nothing. There's yeah. nothing there. So with endometriosis, there's going to be, in the, in the structure around it, there's going to be a holding pattern that's to do with how the person feels and lives and moves and holds themselves up that creates a strain around the womb on some level to cause it to cause the dysfunction and um, chicken and egg which one came first maybe maybe there was deterioration of the area and then the the body around it fixes but my personal opinion is that that deterioration arises through habitual kind of misorganization of the structure that is meant to cradle the space appropriately. So, um, uh, I can't remember what the question was. It's all right. You've answered it. You've answered it. And, and, and you know, going on from that, 
your um, your guidance to Kapalabhati, I, I ignored it. I I had a, a, a pattern, as you describe, of contraction, and I went into that pattern, and I contracted and contracted over mm. that pattern, and then um, got to the end of the class, didn't feel very well, um, cried. <laughs> kind of go at you. And then, then you said, try this. So I would like you to show, I would like you to demonstrate, I'd like you to, to guide me into, and, in the way to do it. Okay. I, I, ve- I do, I have some memory of that. And uh, wh- when you showed me what you were doing to do Kapalabhati, what I saw was the thing that everyone does. And, th- and the, this is the trouble with most instructions um, for powerful practices is people think that doing the thing is the answer, but it's not. Um, The thing that you're doing, Kapalabhati, um, which is why why your original yoga course told you not to do it. Um, One second. There we go. Um, Yeah. Uh, What was I saying? Yes. Of course, told me not to do it. Yeah, they they told told you not to do it because doing it would aggravate the area because it's creating tension in the area around. Now, my question would be, well, why would doing that cause tension? Well, it's because the way you're doing it is causing tension. Um, So I I remember you turning up all angry and furious with me, (laughs) (laughs) swearing away. You've got me on this. But but here's here's the thing that is um, that qualifies you for working with me, and it was the thing I noticed from the very beginning, which is why I wasn't thrown by you being pissed off with me or anything. It's because you were willing to listen to an idea and change change what you're doing. Okay. Now the the thing that you were doing was all holding all the tensions that you hold when you're trying to do something which would be tension around the pelvis, uh, tension on one side of your hip, I think, yeah. uh, at the time, um, that was pulling down on that, that structure. Um, <clears throat> and so when you were doing Kapalabhati, what you were doing was pulling your lower belly back and tightening your pelvic floor with all the, all the bracing around it, so no movement could occur, it's no movement of absolutely fluid. Absolutely spot on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all, all you, the, you were doing was... Um, contracting against yeah. your womb, right? Yeah. If you can change the, 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 this is my look on it, this mm. wasn't what I told you, what I told you, just do it more subtly, <laughs> I think. I, I told you, you to you do told it. told me to go underneath. Underneath, okay, that was a specific, yeah. So, um, yeah, it depends on what you're instructed. So if you're instructed to just pull the belly back rhythmically, then you'll do that. But, um, so... Um, if, if you know what Kapalabhati is, uh, if, you, if you don't, it's, it's a rhythmic release of the breath propelled by a short, sharp pump of the lower belly muscles pulling back. Okay, and, and usually that's triggered, um, usually the, the way people access that is by tightening the pelvic floor. So there's a, it's a sort of, uh, I like to think of it as uh, squeezing the turkey baster to, to uh, pump the air out the top of your head. And now, if you do that with, you're going to hurt yourself. But if, you're, if what you're doing is finding a quality of release and support. So um, if you're not holding yourself up with your back, if you're not holding yourself together with your groins, and you just gently throw a breath away like you've heard a bad joke, and it comes from low down, if you can then extrapolate that, you can, you, you can get a sense of the upward movement that happens. Oh, and by the way, the, uh, the arriving breath that happens afterwards is, is nothing. You don't do anything. You just let go of tension and the breath will fall into the body. So, so just try one. A throw away breath. That's it. And then you relax and you'll breathe anyway. You do it again. Good. And the instruction, main instruction, is to feel supported. So in order to feel supported, you need to not be holding yourself up. So you relax. So you relax your weight. Good. And then the purpose of the Kapalabhati can come to the fore. 
So relax to breathe, just, just relax. You let the breath go a little, and then just towards the end of it, just throw it away like you've heard a bad joke. Good. It's, a, it's about the relaxation rather than the doing. The doing is something you engage with in the moment of realizing that you're relaxed. Another imagery, the purpose of this inner support at the base is to make you free in space. So the imagery of throwing the breath away into the distance when you've just pumped it out, watch it fly into the distance and wait until you're ready for the next one. And whilst it's flying away, at some point you'll receive the breath again as you relax. And if you're relaxed, then eventually this, this rhythmic movement, this kind of pulsing action that pulls back, it pulls you into the ground so you don't have to hold yourself up from inside. And if you associate it with being out in space, then you might find that the relaxed spine starts to um, kind of drift into openness at the heart as a result of this released breath, this throwaway breath. So you get a moment of floating in space. So, Thank you. so th that's the quality of the thing. And then when you get practiced at it, you want to make it less intense you want to make it less of a complication so when you get used to relaxing around it and allowing yourself to be moved by it then you can pump away you know and that's why i wanted to come back to this you know first um big learning i, ha I had with you one one because it was quite pivotal in my understanding that the shift between way th things were being taught in the yoga world and, and what was important to me but also exactly as you say you can do it anywhere so early in um, our working relationship where I'm studying with you I, I had a lot going on in my life I, I didn't have any pain anymore I didn't have any endometriosis pain but I still had um, adhesions and congestion I was really tired, you know, my mum was very ill and I did that practice so much. I did it in the car, I did it at the traffic lights yeah. and it, it's that um, accessibility at, at any time, whilst watching telly, anything, which, which was really, really important to me and um, sort of takes me to that second group of people that come and visit you that, that have some major issue going on um, and I, I got called the queen of sleep because of my <laughs> falling asleep in your yeah, class yeah. because I do a practice and I, I, was, I was exhausted, I was absolutely exhausted. Mm. So I wanted to ask you a question, how do you feel about students falling asleep in your class? Oh, that's great, it's, um, provided they're not just, uh, uh, they're not, uh, okay, um, <laughs> let me explain. Um, like that practice we just did, right? Mm. If you have endo endometriosis, what will happen is if you can get the quality of release around it, then what you're inviting is movement in a place that has movement locked down to avoid pain, right? So it's, it becomes safe to move and, and you, you get that feedback. And as a result, that scar tissue starts to move around. So it starts to have the the possibility of the body repairing to a place of function. Yeah. Um, that uh, whatever's stuck, whatever's fixed in place, gets to move around. And wherever we hold ourselves together on the inside is where we store our stuff. <laughs> where it's the place that gets tense when we are tense. It's the place that uh, prevents movement, that holds on. So it kind of keeps hold of your stuff. and. Uh, I'd be, I, I haven't dissected anyone to find out, but I, I'd be pretty um, convinced that if I did, you would find uh, a store of toxins 
in, yes. in the area. You're, you're trying, wherever the body is fixed against movement is where it keeps your crap, you know? Mm. And um, so releasing that is a big deal. Releasing that stuff is a big deal. And you have to allow the body to rest. And, and it will be a, a, a kind of rest that you, you don't normally have because normally your rest is disturbed by the body holding on to that stuff. <laughs> so taking it into Western pathology, for example, would it be that um, the white blood cell and the, uh, the phagocytes start clearing away all of those toxins and those dead cells and the pus? And Quite possibly, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't... I, I don't, mean, I, will, I know yeah. we're... <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've not done the, the research to find out that, but my, my basic um, principle is if you give the body the right conditions... The body heals itself yeah. and the way it does that um, that's for the people that understand these things exactly. to work out but um, creating the right conditions for the body to heal itself is it, then all you need to do is to leave yourself in that more harmonious condition as mm -hmm. you relax and allow allow the body to do its job mm -hmm. and so I'm quite happy for it provided the student has gone there mm -hmm. you can sleep throughout their rest of the class that's fine yeah. and going back to what you were saying about um, the, the things changing i mean yoga is the science of the body it's our own body we are our own um, petri dress our own science experiment and in my experience for i couldn't um side bend to the, the right for, for a long long time i couldn't twist to, towards the right and it wasn't by yanking on it that, that made it happen it was by these deep practices, quite quiet ones. They don't look like much. They're, they're not very exciting Instagram pictures. But um, and then sleep. Then then suddenly I can I can do things. And I remember thinking coming coming to, to lessons with you. I, I think we had about three years of Maha Pranayama, and I, I, I remember saying. God, you must be bored of teaching me this because it was always the same posture because I was so tired. And after three years, Mark said, I think you might be ready to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and he was right. He yeah. was right. I mean, I, I then... Um, but it, to, to be fair, it's not three years of lying on your back waiting for something to happen. No. It, it's, um, um, it's a very active... Uh, posture in that uh, lying down on your back with your feet on the floor uh, won't go into it right now but um, it's about how you relate to the, to support and how you relate through the breath and how you relate to space yeah. and those things in, involve those deep actions that can be really quite intense yeah. and then uh, having woken them up you can rest in the situation that you're in with a new experience of yourself so I Kapalabhati is your big posture and I, I'm going to put a link in the um Mahapranayama, you mean? Mahapranayama. Yeah. I'm quite dyslexic. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mahapranayama is a, bit, is a big posture that, that Mark teaches, and I'll put a link to my teaching of that practice. It's, a, it's, a, name, it's a name I made up. Um, it, it just means the great breath, and I, and I changed it later to Mahapranayama Asana, which is even harder to say, because <laughs> it's a posture that you engage with. So, so how um, did you come up with that? Why, why did you develop that? Um, I had this, I was running this class on a Thursday in, in, in Brighton and I had this class where um, three out of the five people in the room were suffering from ME and, um, and I, I could feel it in their bodies, uh, their, uh, their bodies had this sort of heaviness to it um, and I could kind of feel that they were leaking energy with that heaviness and anything they did involved lifting that weight up. And um, I wanted to come up with something that they could do that would improve their condition. And um, I made it a, uh, a, an, an ME class, uh, mm -hmm. a, a class for people suffering from ME. And um, all we did was this lying down. And I, I knew that the, the relationships that they needed to feel supported was when their breathing could relate to support. And lying down, you can still work with that. And in fact, it, um, because you're lying down, the, the inner responses are more obvious and, and simpler to find. So I kind of developed it as a thing that people that are suffering from chronic fatigue could do to improve their well-being. Surprising outcome was uh, 
I think three of the five, uh, well, they, they continued with me, six months later had far less symptoms of ME and, it, and uh, they, they, they became addicted to it, like, like Abigail did. Yeah, that's and, um, Yeah, <laughs> and, and um, because it's a thing you can do any time, uh, because it involves lying down. So you start with that sort of, ah, oh, I can lie down. Then you get working in a way that actually gives you energy rather than kind of pushing energy out, which is how most people work. Um, it's use, when, when, when your breath is relating to the ground and your body gets used to doing that, um, energy is kind of, physical energy is kind of recycled. Um, it, it does something different. It, it's a powerful practice. And throughout its practice, I kind of gradually realized that it's teaching everything you need to know about yoga as well. So it became the, the kind of core theme of teach training, which confused a few people. But, but, <laughs> it's um, a good starting point yeah. for every class. It is, yeah. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you touched on it a bit before, and um, you were teaching on Zoom about eight years before everyone else. I remember that mad scramble when everyone started throwing their sofas into the <laughs> yeah. into the road so they could teach their class in their living room. And I I wanted classes every week with you doing the teacher training. And we were lucky enough to all get one to ones, weren't we? Uh, when you taught the teacher training, so tell t- tell me a bit more about how how you find teaching on zoom oh, um okay well i i really like it now i i, I um, really enjoy it it's it's a different thing from uh, in person because in person i can walk over put my hands on and sort of move some bones and give someone an experience you know um so that makes the person kind of reliant on the teacher and that, that's the normal kind of uh, yoga relationship but but on online I can't do that so all, all I can do is come up with ideas and ways of thinking about things all I can do is respond to how that person is thinking and uh, uh, it, it's a it, it was a new it was kind of when I first did it it was a new thing to do um, because I, I was kind of used to just putting my hands on and giving them the experience mm. but um uh, teaching online, you have to find a way of getting the person to create that experience for themselves, which actually I, I think is more valuable long term. It, it's not as quick in that um, I can't just give them experience, but um, it, they, have, they have to take on the principles and apply them and then recognize when they've applied them well because their body responds in the right way. So it's. Um, uh, that wasn't the question. Uh, that, that's what I. That's what I like about it. Um, when I first did it, it was. It was uh, actually the only thing available at the time was Skype, and uh, I, I taught a load of um, Americans. Uh, what was it? It was a, Yeah, it was um, uh, Namaste USA. They're, they're a Scaravelli inspired kind of um, group that I went. I went over to the states and. Uh, taught them some stuff and then they wanted to carry on so I said well why don't we why can't we we can do it on Skype you know I, I can do that <laughs> and we, we we had a go and I, I loved it I absolutely loved it it was great I had people uh, there I had a microphone and a mat and one it was a group of teachers so I had one teacher uh, trying to follow my instructions uh, with their hands on and I would be talking to both the teacher and the person that was receiving so that um, people could have the experience. Absolutely loved it. So um, I just included it in everything I did from then on. So when I got round to, when we got round to running a teacher training thing, well, you got round to organizing it, <laughs> then you qualified and then you became part of it. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I recorded everything because I wanted students to have access to the information because so much information comes out in one 20 minute session, let alone a whole day let alone a whole weekend. So mm-hmm. I wanted the thing to be recorded. So I got used to filming and stuff. And uh, half my students were up in Scotland. So the only way I could do one-to-ones was, uh, if I wasn't there, was via, via the internet. So I got very used to it. And um, so when COVID hit, it was, uh, it was just a case of opening up the cupboard and switching on the camera, you know. Yeah, so, lucky us. Yeah. yeah, it was really good for us. <laughs> so... Um, where many of your students, when they graduated, they didn't necessarily go 
into teaching yoga, um, often they applied the principles of what they learnt with you into what they did already. Um, so this is a major fishing trip with a big boat. <laughs> um, how, because you've, you've received treatments from me, yeah. how has what I learned from you influenced what I do now? Well, that's a, that's a kind of better, you're better to answer that question. But from, from my perspective, um, anyone, all the people that are trained with me, um, a couple of them are yoga teachers, but um, most of them, like you say, do other things. So um, there, was a, there was a psychotherapist yeah. who got very much into the embodiment of the 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 embodiment side of psychotherapy you know, she, she realized there was no difference between how the, how the body was responding and how the person was responding so she sort of incorporated um, this kind of practical understanding of how to engage with the world uh, physically with her psychotherapy um, there was a nutritionist who, who um, gained I think a clearer understanding of actually the body tells you what you want to eat, <laughs> really. Not, not, what, not, not what the addictions and the personality cling on to, but if you listen to the body, you can feel. You can feel what you need. And um, what else was there? So for yourself, um, healing, acupuncture, just, um, it's hard to describe what you do because um, you have such a broad range of skills that you've studied intently for each one of them. And and they, they come together into your own kind of unique uh, thing. But I think what you've gained from doing the course with me and working with me with the yoga is this idea that it's all the same thing. Yeah. It, it, with all these various practices, uh, Tai Chi, Qigong, acupuncture, uh, naturopathy, uh, all of it, is all part of the same thing. It's about what's the best way to live happily, healthily, mm. and well. Um, you know, what's the, what's the, how do you create the best conditions for life? And um, with that understanding that everything is looking at the same thing from perhaps different angles, it fleshes out the whole picture. So you, instead of it being, instead of you being an acupuncturist looking for um, solutions for all, all ills by finding the right channel and putting needles in, you see that in the context of the whole person. So, you know, if you had a client coming along that was, had, had a, um, an emotional issue that, that was uh, keeping the energy from flowing uh, correctly in that particular channel, you'd liberate that channel but you would also see the physicality that was holding that problem in place and getting the thing to repeat over and over again. Mm -hmm. So you would also have an idea of how uh, they could work with, the, uh, with their bodies in order to sustain the free flow of energy in that channel, which would in turn sustain a change in that person's relationship to the world. and, and uh, they're kind of, yeah. Because that's what we want. We don't want people coming back week in, week out with the same, oh, my shoulder, my shoulder, my shoulder. We want them to find find the support that they're not getting mm, that's yeah, causing the shoulder that problem. And, the, and, and obviously, you know, we want to give relief in the moment. It must be agonising and distracting and all that sort of stuff. But mm. ultimately, we, we want to do ourselves out of a job, don't we? Yeah, well, that's the, that's, the, that's the aim, really, isn't it? It's not, not the best business model. But the best business model is to say, I can, I can heal you, but you have to come to me. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, and, uh, there have been moments when I've wished I was able to do that, but, but it's uh, not my character and uh, not yours either. Um, no. We want... We want uh, I think the baseline intent is we have both felt empowered by our practices to... Yeah feel better in life and get on with life in a in a better way and we want to give that to other people because that's what it's for it's not it's not for uh, us to be uh, famous practitioners or anything it's, it's to it's to actually 
help. It's to help people. Uh, and in a that's real way. why we repeat these practices. It's yeah. not a case of, oh, maha pranayama tick. I know what that is. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, oh, today, I think I'll approach it like this mm. because, and, and then there's a, a loving intent to our own body, something that's, that's going on that can be assisted mm. with, with this practice that has been done over and over again. It might be maha pranayama, might be something else. And then, you can say, oh, I feel a bit better. I know what, I'll stand up and I'll do triangle or, or, or something else. It's mm. not about, that's, that's not the, the, the goal. The goal isn't that particular mm. thing. The goal is to be creative. I, I, I would like to add a little something. She said something yeah. about uh, people coming back um, with the same issue. Yeah. Um, as you unpeel the layers with the yoga, with uh, with the tachyon healing that Afghal does, or whatever it is that you you use to peel back the layers, there will be probably <laughs> there'll be one area that's always been with you on some level that you'll uncover that will keep repeating, that will keep coming back, and and this is your friend. This is your barometer. This is the, the source issue that maybe happened at birth, that maybe happened before birth. Who knows? Um, so it's also not about fixing, even though that's the kind of thing that you're trying to do. You're trying to f change your relationship to things so that you don't experience discomfort, so you feel better. Mm -hmm. um, but that thing that is at the source of your um, life journey, um, thing that you need to get past the, the the possibly even the reason you're here to the thing you're trying you're here to resolve. There's going to be an aspect in your body, a part of your spine. Uh, it could be that that hip. If, uh, I mean, the hip does come back sometimes when yeah. you're stressed, but it's a reminder. This is why it's your friend. It becomes a barometer for when you are less than in yourself. Yeah. And uh, and because you can you can find physical solutions. But those physical solutions go with you having a particular relationship to the world that is free of that issue. Mm. So it's when you are free of that issue, when you are in a relationship to the world that is free of that, prob that emotional, that, that source issue, that you are free of the physical problem. So there's going to be, there's likely to be, for most people, there's one sticky, sticky area. And that sticky area is your friend because you can, as much as you can work to find physical solutions, it will come back when you lose yourself every time. Mm. And it will be your reminder to come back to yourself. Thank you. Yeah. So after 12 years, I'm really happy that um, you're teaching Saturday morning, morning workshops. Um, and it's not just once a month. And I don't have to fly to Scotland. You do it on Zoom. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to join your... Um, Saturday morning class and they've watched this video is there something that you could offer them as a special offer okay well if they if uh, if you send them my way I'll, I'll give them a special discount um, first first one you can you can turn up for half price so I'll, I'll, I'll make a coupon code that uh, Abigail can pass on to you and then you can turn so up for put it. that in the in the link and um, you can use it once and just get a taster of why this particular yeah. approach to yoga is so special and, and I'd done a lot of yoga before I came and worked with Mark and my hips still hurt and um, I was really genuinely worried that I would end up with a hip replacement because there's a history of it in my family going back generations and um, so I don't can, have that. Can I ask you a question? How, yeah. how long, not, not before it was solved, but how long before you could uh, tell that it could be solved? Yeah, it was fairly quick, actually. I think what made the big difference, uh, I know that you're not offering this, but um, a week retreat, you, are, you have got one coming up in Turkey. Okay. There's something really important of a week's focused attention and mm. having this, this voice that's assisting you with being kind to yourself. Because I think that, you know, that's the fundamental nature mm. of your, your work. Um, and at the end of that week, I did feel very different and really optimistic. I remember getting in the car 
feeling very, very optimistic that this was, um, this was really going to help and that, and that I could translate it out of that workshop experience into my life. Mm. Because you can get relief on, on a treatment table or in a class or something, but it's, it's having it beyond that. It's it? having it in your daily life, being able to access it yeah. as you go about it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But um, yeah, a retreat will do that because yeah. you've got someone else's voice there. You don't have to do it. You, you don't have to work it out yourself. Um, and the, it's consistent so you'll remember. But that, that's the point. Um, it's the consistency and the, the consistency of practice. When you go on a retreat, you do it twice a day, every day. Yeah. And it's for a certain number of hours. Although the, the Saturday morning workshops are two and a half hours. So you, you get a good chunk of time with a little gap in the middle um, to play with these things. It's the consistency, yeah. and I know for myself as well, it's really hard to motivate yourself when it's just you, the mat, your pain or your awkwardness, yeah. your life and the stresses that you're dealing with. It, it seems like a, um, a ridiculous indulgence yeah. to take t time away from that really important thing that's calling you, that has to be done to look after yourself. When you commit to a week's retreat, ah, you, you're there, you paid your money, you're gonna get the most out of it. So you yeah. surrender to it. And, uh, and because there's someone, is out, someone else's voice guiding you, you surrender to that. To do this for yourself takes some sort of discipline, but it's a discipline of kindness to yourself, giving yourself the time to just lay down in a, you know, something, something you like doing physically that feels comfortable, that can start to get you in inquiring for yourself into your own body. And it's, uh, the mind is the thing that gets in the way of that, your agenda, your life. Um, so the discipline is in creating that time for yourself. And you can get as much out of a single workshop as you get out of an entire retreat, mm -hmm. simply by following the same kind of intention for that week if you can put in the time it's it's down to how much time you spend in the in new relationships because the rest of your life um you're going about your day with all the stresses and strains and all the reactions in your body that those things cause that's what you're practicing 24 7 right uh, to counter that to change your life you need to have such a regular communion with your deep self on a physical level um that you become familiar with what it feels like to be uncomplicated in your body. Yeah, amazing. And then, then you won't want to take complications into things you do. So you start to practice as you get on with your life. Not, not stopping to do practice, but you take the relationships that work for you and, help, and support you in your life. And that, that's the point, that's what yoga is for. It's not to make you good at yoga. That's not its purpose. Its purpose, is to make you good at life, good at what you want to do in your life. So that's why most of my trainees go off and do the thing that they love doing. And the principles are to do with how to be in yourself as you do these things. So, Yeah, and I remember we weren't lucky enough to have weekly workshops back when you were first, I was first working with you, it was once a month. So I remember coming away each month with something and I, I have a really strong memory of an early workshop it was a big, big toe and the whole month it was big toe, big toe, big toe, big toe. Yeah. and then um, I got you know back and I said oh, I've been doing big toe all month <laughs> he's like all right you got that all right and I try spreading the toes from that you know and, and um, just it just <laughs> it's quite funny looking back on it now but yeah. um, it that that momentary relief is so exquisite it, it's nectar and you, you just want more of it yeah. and um and, and having those small windows of it in in life is whilst you're doing washing up big toe and um you can you you can get that discipline mm. I think, so. yeah it, it, make, it makes me think of um a quote from vanda where she says um uh, eventually if you if you practice in this way where you um well she doesn't say all this but she says yoga eventually takes you by the hair, pulls you up and makes you do it. Because that, that, that's how it's supposed to be. It, it, um, your body sp starts speaking to you in ways that go, okay, I'll do that because it, it feels great when I do it, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, yeah. 
And I, I think that's the way it should be. It's that, it's that kind of discipline where you're, you're, you're not disciplined making yourself do stuff to your body, but you're disciplined in looking after yourself and allowing your body to, be ex to express what you need. And um, yeah, so there you go. Well, thank you so much for making this video with me and Pleasure. answering these questions that are, that are um, very close to my heart that I've been grappling with and have the solutions I've found in your classes I've mm -hmm. applied um, mm -hmm. and I continue to apply. So um, thank you for speaking to, to my audience. Yeah, that's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I would recommend it if, if anyone wants um, to a kind of fast track to do something with Abigail. She, she'll come up with what you need. And um, um, I, I did the tachyon training with, with Abigail, but she's the practitioner. I kind of went along as a, as a body to, to experience the thing. And it's, it's powerful stuff. And it gets into, it gets into the areas that, um, of the personality. The, the energetic stuff is, is basically personality. Um, and it, it can cut away um, the nonsense and it's a kind of a fast track and then and then working with the body um, to sustain the the freedoms that you get from that the the, the two together I, I think yeah, I, I agree. We, we've always tried to sort of work together and you try to do my yoga and I try to do your healing but basically I do what I do you do what you do yes. and between us we got it covered yeah um, so you know if, if it's like a, if you've got a if you've got a plaster all the way down your arm and and we're trying to work out shoulders um it's going to be hard for you to work out you could and eventually the plaster will fall off but if you go to abigail first she'll rip she'll take the plaster off and make it all nice and smooth and then you can come and work with me and work out how to use your shoulder you know so um there, there's a symbiosis here that we've not really explored properly yet or yeah. not known how to explore yet we, we will work it out. We'll work it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you again. And um, I, I have more people who have been asking me to do this, so there'll be more coming up. But um, this was the one that I, this is my big fish to catch you to do <laughs> oh, this. So thank um, you. I'm really, you, they were brilliant answers. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste. <laughs>